Now we move on to problem 6-2a. We're using the same data that we had from problem 6-1a for midnight supplies. We have the same inventory at the beginning of the year already entered here for us in our inventory record. And then we have a, a list of purchases and sales that happened in chronological order, in the order in which they happened. In this problem, the difference from 6-1a is that we are now using the last in first out or LIFO method. So when we make a purchase on the 10th, we follow the same process. This part is going to look exactly the same as it did in the first exercise. We have to keep our layers separate just as we did in the first exercise in problem 6-2a, excuse me, 6 dash 1a. So we have to keep those layers separate. But now here on the 28th is where we see something different. The sale is reported for the same number of units, but because we're using the LIFO method, last in, first out, we sell the newest units. We sell the $85 units rather than selling the $75 ones as we did under the FIFO method. So we still need to keep our layers in order. It will always be important to keep those layers in order so we know which ones are the last in, that is the newest, and which ones are the first in. We had 22,500 of the $85 ones. We sold 11,250. And so one really important point here is it doesn't matter under the LIFO, FIFO, or average cost method, it doesn't matter which units we actually sold. What we are doing here is showing the flow of cost through our inventory records, and that may not be exactly what's happening on the, on the store um, shelves, if you will. On the 30th, we have another sale, and that sale is for 3,750 units, and the Because we're using the LIFO method, we're going to keep those oldest units, $7,500 at $75, and we're going to sell some of the $85 ones. We had $11,250 at $85, but we sold some of those. And we kept all of the $75 ones and... and we have 7,500 of the $85 ones. Whoops, sorry, wrong formula. There we go. Okay. And on February 5th, we had one more sale. This is the one that I forgot about when I was calculating the, the sales revenues in the last problem. So again, we're going to keep the oldest layer intact, the 7,500 units at $75. And of the 7,500 at $85, we sold 1,500 of those. So I think you get the idea. We'll do one more transaction here. We made a purchase of 54,000 units on February 10th, and those are the units that cost $87.50. So we have our layers that existed before we bought these new units and then we just add one more layer and so i think you get the idea at this point unfortunately we don't have an example to do for average cost method but um, the average cost method is a weighted average cost and so each time you make a new purchase, you simply calculate a new weighted average for your inventory. So under the weighted average cost method, all inventory is carried at one price, which is the average price. And we calculate that by adding up all the dollars in our inventory, adding up all the units in our inventory, and dividing the dollars by the units. So if we bought more inventory, like in this example, we bought more inventory, 54,000 units at 87.50. Those units are going to be weighted more heavily 
it's eight, and so the average is going to be closer to 8750 than it will be to the 75 or 85. We're going to stop there and I would ask you to complete the rest of this inventory record on your own before you watch the next part of the video. I'm going to complete the rest of mine and then we will come back and do part two to answer the remaining questions.